Good evening, everybody. Going to come back from some actual impressions. We're going to chat paediatrics today. So I'm going to be joined by Dr. Mack, who was one of our teachers at King's. Didn't teach me, unfortunately. Missed out on the best tutor, apparently, according to that person in the questions. But uh, we're going to get Dr. Mack on. We're going to chat through some paediatrics. We've had tons of questions. Uh, and we'll see what, uh, what Matt's got to say on it. As always, if you've got any questions whilst we're going, oh, straight in. Look at that. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> now, everyone, Matt got her hair cut today just for this. Um, so it's pretty good. We had Sravan on at four o'clock in the morning in Australia. Matt's getting a haircut. So this is, you know, this is the kind of level of commitment I want. How are you doing? You okay? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm guessing you didn't hop out between AGPs and that Tuesdays is your day off. Uh, it's my day off, so yeah, there was can't no get, problem. Can't be getting a haircut on an AGP day. Apart from the weather, which really <laughs> let, it let you down. <laughs> <laughs> Not been ideal today. No. Um, so yeah, I was just saying to just before we got you on, um, anyone's got questions as we're going, just hop on in. Um, but yeah, we're going to chat through some paediatric stuff. I'm hoping we're going to have all of your students on today. Um, <laughs> I'll count them tomorrow. <laughs> extra credit, extra credit for them if they turn up today. Um, so we're going to chat some paediatric stuff. And just want to give everyone a quick little intro if anyone doesn't know who you are and what you do, and then we'll jump in. Sure. Uh, my name is Makbule, actually. That's my real name, but people know me as Mac. Uh, I'm a general dentist. I'm also a pediatric dentist, but I'm not a specialist in this country. I had my specialist training back home in Turkey. So I'm known as a general dentist with a special interest in pediatric dentistry. Uh, I work in a fully private clinic part-time, and I'm also a clinical teacher at King's College Dental Institute in the Department of Pediatric Dentistry, training fourth years and final year students. Perfect. How's that, how's that been at the hospital? Are they getting back on track? It's good, actually. We sort of like went back to normal. So finally, we have both year groups, hygiene therapy students, everyone back in the clinic. Obviously, we, we done our PPE, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So slowly, slowly, we're getting back to normal, which is nice. It, it feels normal. I forgot it was the hygiene therapy as well. They do yeah. the combined Mondays. sessions, don't they? Yeah. Uh, Mondays. <laughs> Perfect. So I mean, we're going we're gonna to jump straight in. We had loads of questions. So I think the main things people want to cover were behavioral management, uh, caries management, obviously, and then based on that, was sort of hall crowns uh, and some on MIH as well, which is the main thing that I actually want to chat about. That side, my uh, one of my topics because I I'm actually I really enjoy peds. I do a lot of the peds actually at the practice that I work at. Um, Hopefully the not the dentures. Coming. Hopefully <laughs> not the dentures. No, that's the thing. I didn't have any posts this week to share to to build up for it. Um, I do. I did get given a keyring with a little tiny uh, impression tray on it for a birthday yeah. present last year. So I think that would have been good for maybe a six-month-old, something like that. <laughs> um, but no, I do a lot of the peds. So actually, I'm, I'm quite quite keen to could jump in on this. So, in terms of behavioural management stuff, I mean, even today, I had a two and a half year old, a uh, little Indian chap actually, and he just actually moved from India and wasn't speaking any English so then that was all I was already in a, lo a lot of trouble there huh. um safe to say I didn't get a look properly inside his mouth I got about eight seconds um but what are your sort of top tips for behavioral management any no-nos you know absolutely don't do's what do you reckon well for your patient for instance I would have recommended maybe a lap examination mm -hmm. okay so because very young child uh with behavior management techniques you, I tend to use a combination of all of them. So my main ones, I think the, the very number one one is the tell, show, do. Mm -hmm. You use that even with your adult patients, etc. And the distraction, uh, where your nurse actually plays a very important part. Um, positive reinforcement. Uh, is that the same as bribery? <laughs> well, we do not bribe the children. So... Obviously, when a child doesn't want to be treated or doesn't want to be examined, uh, sometimes I hear my nurse saying, I'll get you two stickers, okay, if you open really wide. So I, I don't interfere with that. And the parents use that bribery, which is their decision. Like, we, when we finish, we're going to go to the toy store and we're going to get what you want, etc. cetera. Uh, but sometimes, and most of the time, whatever you do, none of these works. 
<laughs> so I, I don't do uh, bribery. That actually, it's not, it's not something that I think it works. And I would, I would not recommend anyone to do that, actually. So um, you just need to un understand the child. You need to spend time to see which one is working really well. So that is why pediatric dentistry is, is a, a, an area that you really need time with your patient. So something that you only spend 15 minutes with your adult patient, sometimes you need an hour with a child. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're not willing to do that, maybe it's best not to do it, but uh, you need to use all sorts of behavior management techniques. It's not like, I'm, I'm just gonna use this, or I'm just gonna use that. No, it all comes as a, a combination. And the more you see a child patient, the, the more familiar you get with those techniques, actually. Mm -hmm. And in, obviously you've said in your, your practice, you're in private practice, so are you, are you setting out with pediatric patients that you know, we're going to be having acclimatization appointments? Is that part of it? Or is it just sort of they're booking a general you know, new patient checkup? Yeah. How, does it, how does it work? Are you sort of putting it out front? That we, I might not have a look today. We're just going to do this and that. So when someone asks for specifically for me a pediatric consultation, uh, majority of the time, obviously, a parent wants to get the treatment done as soon as possible. And it's a no-no from me. So mm -hmm. there is no compromise, uh, compromise there because I need to get to know the child. And same uh, from the child's point of view. I'm an unknown to a child. They're yeah. coming to a brand new place, a brand new phase. Who am I? What am I going to do to them? Their parents just drag them <laughs> to sit on that chair. So unless the child is in imminent pain, Mm -hmm. uh, I don't do any treatment. So there will be an acclimatization. Even the child is very cooperative. Uh, they get to know you. And once you build that rapport, actually, things just go quickly. So mm -hmm. the parent needs to understand that. So if someone uh, phones the practice and asks for a, an appointment with treatment, if possible, uh, I tell my receptionist, say that um, we'll book you for a consultation. So Dr. Mack is going to go through everything with you. Uh, but there won't be a, a definitive treatment today. There could be like fluoride varnish application, et cetera, tooth brushing demo, but I won't be drilling the tooth. Mm -hmm. Let's mm -hmm. put it that way. Yeah. Fine, perfect. And then in terms of, you know, acclimatization and moving things forward like that, obviously you need to know what you're going to need to do anyway, but said you might need additional time for certain techniques in terms of actually communicating. So yeah, it's, even for adult patients, when they say, oh, I've broken a filling, that could be anything from a, a, exactly. small, a small little I, I chip to tooth. needing a crown. So, yeah. well, it's a broken porcelain crown, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I yeah, won't yeah. be able to fix that there. So consultation is the key. So that's uh, with any, any patient, that's when you get to know your patient, you give them a treatment plan, you explain things, including the cost, etc., And they need to go back home and just digest that information and come back to you if they're happy. So there is no point rushing things, especially with a child. You need you need to take your time. Yeah, and in terms of just pulling it back, you said a lap to lap exam. So that's something I I do it all the time. Um, but for people who are maybe aren't sort of familiar with that term, to just chat us through that a little bit. Yeah. So the lap examination is very useful for uh, toddlers for little babies in a way uh, so because uh, even if they sit on their parents lap you won't be able to get a good look inside their mouth so what you do you sit face to face with the parent and the child's head is on your lap and the parent is holding the child gently I'm not talking about restraining but gently their arms and then the, when the child is lying flat, flat you just look a bow Okay, and at that case, uh, actually, many of them cry, which is good because you can see. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a, it's a quick examination. Okay, so let's be realistic. You're not going to achieve too much, but that gives you an idea. Let's say a two year old had trauma. Okay, mm -hmm. and they're crying out loud. And at least you can have a look and see what the damage is. So that, that's really um, helpful in, uh, in those cases. 
Yeah, that, that, that's always a, a tough one, isn't it? The the toddler with trauma. That's always yes. the that's always yeah. the worst. Maybe that's something we can get to at the end. Uh, that was a topic no one asked about. But yeah, trauma. My... Nobody asked about it. <laughs> well, there we go. Let's add that one in. Um, and then you mentioned there about sort of restraints and things like that. Now I know that's actually uh, something that there's further training in that, right? So in terms of in, in the hospital setting, is that not something in pediatrics where there's is it, or that might be more special care stuff? Um, Maybe. Restraining is against the law in this country. You can't mm. restrain children, okay? So if a child needs restraining, then you need to look for sedation, general anesthesia options. But uh, it, it's not the case in other countries. Okay. Mm -hmm. For instance, in Turkey, yes, we did restrain the children. In Brazil, they do restrain the children because they have no other option. GA is a luxury. Sedation mm -hmm. is a luxury. So you have to do the treatment. You have to get on with it, basically. So it's not ideal, but in certain parts of the world, it's still a behavior management technique, restraining. Mm. And that was the, that's what mum said to me today is that John was just holding I was like no, 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 no don't do that <laughs> don't do that I think the only uh, exception here is if the child is going under general anesthesia mm -hmm. and you need to do the induction but the child is not allowing you they yeah. do that very briefly yeah yeah perfect so the next thing people want to ask was bottle caries caries risks things like that um and you're going to tell me off for calling it bottle caries aren't you because it's not called that anymore what do uh, we call that <laughs> Uh, early early childhood carers or severe early childhood carers. Yeah. Uh, what are the what are the definitions for that then? Is that just any is any carries under three? So if a, any carries under three and the smooth surface carries, okay, like the anterior cheat. So that's the severe early childhood carries. When I was a student, even in my postgraduate training, we learned them as a bottle carriers. Which mm -hmm. is not wrong. I don't think it's wrong to define it like that. But the textbook now defines them in a different way. Um, so the the management of severe early childhood caries, the basically the basic thing is the prevention. Mm -hmm. So because the uh, mainly the diet is causing that. Okay. So uh, a toddler feeding with bottles, sometimes breastfeeding on demand as well. Okay. might cause that problem so education prevention is the key um if you're asking me about whether it's possible to restore this teeth it's it depends on how the clinical picture is how much destruction happened and you might have seen it on social media instagram etc people are putting zirconia crowns it's the brazilians the they love it brazilians turkish <laughs> 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 and uh, it's very common in Middle East as well. I haven't seen it here. And if the indication is right, if the case is right, I think it works well. And there is a pediatric dentist, um, if I'm pronouncing uh, wrongly, excuse me, Dr. Rajesh Bakir from Bangladesh, I believe. He does beautiful zirconia crowns. But what I like about him, he does it on children who who can who he can treat on the chair mm -hmm. he's not doing it under general anesthesia that's my only objection to that type of treatment when people do that under general anesthesia because it, it's a bit i find it a bit risky mm -hmm. if it doesn't work what are you going to do are you going to put that child under ga again yeah yeah but so, that's that's always the argument with sort of ga here and when i was in my fd we had we did the ga contracts as well and I went to a few of the sessions there and you just go, if this carries in anything, it's coming out because we're not risking, mm -hmm. we're not, we're not risking them needing another GA. So you just, it's, but it makes, it makes it very black and white, but it makes it quite stark yeah. as well. When you see a six year old with everything gone, it's quite, everything. yeah. And then they come to me for the little impression. And it's great. <laughs> <laughs> denture. We did actually in my postgraduate training, we did dentures for children. Like I remember one case, he had ectodermal dysplasia. Mm -hmm. So he had no teeth on the bottom jaw and only the pointy canines. Um, he had to wear a denture. One yeah. of my, one of my uh, best friends, he's, he was, he's got sixes and upper ones and that's it. And he's been wearing a denture since he was 
since he was very young. He won't be on to thank you. Although my sister did drop by, so it was a great insight. So hopefully she won't tell him. I also spotted that Mally, my tutor, is here. So I need to make sure I don't make Mally. any mistakes. Oh, Mally was on, so I need to make sure I'm not making any mistakes as well. Um, and then in terms of that, uh, I'm not going to test you on everything in, in DBOH. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but um, yeah, diet's always the main thing. It's going to be frequency. And the typical bottle carries, as you say, it's it's late night feeding, it's on demand breastfeeding, yeah. which is always a fun conversation to have, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and then what is, I think the next thing that people are asking was about sort of symptomatic caries and sort of options with that. I think I think it was Vic's question asked specifically about D's. I don't, D's, know, yeah. I don't know why he specifically asked D's, but... Um, uh, and Dr. Uh, Dr. Selena says you do a great job with kids. Uh, oh, hi, Selena. <laughs> <laughs> and it is just Rajesh, is what you said. Yeah. Yeah, I think I have. I think I have seen him about. Um, so yeah, I think take the D's out of it. Not sure why that was the the specific thing. Maybe if Vic's here, he can let us know. But so, um, uh, when carries gonna... becoming symptomatic. Yes, let's say symptomatic primary molars. Okay, not just the D's. Mm -hmm. So it depends E's on. matter what... two guys. E's ma matter more than D's. <laughs> because when you lose an E, you lose more space. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's say primary molars, uh, depending on what sort of symptoms you're getting. So is it reversible or irreversible? And also what you're seeing on the x ray. So while we're on the subject, uh, I have to emphasize, you need to take x-rays from children. And clinically, what you're seeing is just the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. And that's where most GDPs go wrong, in my opinion, because they see a small distal caries on a D, okay? And the child doesn't have that many symptoms, maybe pain on biting, and, and they don't want to scare the child by giving injection. And they say, okay, I'm just going to do a bit of cleaning here and we're going to put the paste. The more they drill, it becomes a cave. And what mm -hmm. happens? The child feels the pain and then becomes uncooperative. Now, I get the letter at King's. <laughs> <laughs> we try to restore it to it, but the child became uncooperative. And I'm asking, did you give LA? No. Okay. So always take an x-ray because 100% I can guarantee you that cavity is a big cavity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, when, by the time you can clinically see it, it's the, exactly. whole thing about, it's the whole thing about the marginal ridge. If, you know, if the marginal ridge is gone, it's probably in the pulp. And in the pulp, yeah. The probably. only caries that we ever see is when the marginal ridge is gone, you've got a distal or mesial box there. So. Exactly. So <laughs> if, you, if you're getting reversible symptoms, um, that's good because you, you can save that tooth you can maintain the vitality uh, and you have different options here if you have a re a tooth with reversible symptoms but not a cooperative child i do whole grounds for these children mm -hmm. okay so and i actually so far uh, they work brilliantly well but you should take an x-ray and you should have a look at the focaccia there shouldn't be any radiolucency yeah. Okay. If you see radio lucency, that's going irre irreversible. If it's irreversible and you have a cooperative child, you can do pulpectomy, which is the root canal version of uh, primary molars. Mm -hmm. Put a crown, fine. If you don't have a cooperative patient, then maybe you need to refer that child. Or if you can treat the child under inhalation sedation, do it. But if not, refer and somebody else will be able to do it. The worst case scenario, very uncooperative child, the tooth has to come out. Mm -hmm. There isn't much you can do because that uncooperative child will probably require GA. I'm not talking about one single tooth here. I'm talking about multiple teeth. If mm -hmm. it's one tooth, you can try on the sedation, but some children do not even accept the sedation. That means the tooth has to come out on the short GA. You're not gonna do pulp therapy on the GA. I wouldn't. Yeah. Okay. So that would be my recommendation. Just look at the symptoms and take an x-ray. So are symptoms the same as for adult teeth in terms of reversible, irreversible, in terms of you know, duration and things like that? Is it similar symptoms or does it vary? It's similar. However, it's very difficult to get the, those answers from the child, even from the parent. 
okay mm -hmm. so when you say that how long does it stay the child needs to un answer that question even to their parents so it's basically is it painful when you're biting does it go away when you don't bite um does it wake you up at night time mm -hmm. does mommy need to give you me medicine for that okay and um the luckily again when you take an x-ray you actually start to see the early signs of irreversible pulpitis in the forcaceous area mm -hmm. that's why it's important so if someone says that it's actually not hurting uh sometimes it hurts when i eat something but when i brush it it goes away that's a reversible pulpitis for me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but if they say that it's it's it always hurts it's all the time there and I wasn't able to sleep last night. That's irreversible. Whilst we're on the topic of x-rays, someone's just asked up the top there, um, any tips on taking x-rays? You know, what films are you using? Are you using the, the, little, the little bite tab? There's those little spongy sticker things. Oh, yes, they're, they're very handy, actually. And I use the, obviously, if I'm taking bite wings, I'm using the small size x-ray. Zeros? Yeah. 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 So um, some children are, are quite good with bite wing film holders, but uh, even for an adult, it's not actually very comfortable, is it? Mm. So yes, you can use those stickers, and that's what we do actually at Kings as well. That's what yeah, that's what I think that's what yeah, we use the yeah. stick yeah. on. Yeah. So um, yeah, it, it's not impossible to take an X-ray from a child. Okay, um, but if the child is not allowing you to take X-ray that's an uncooperative child in a way. So you, you will struggle to give local to that child. So you need to take your time, maybe show it on a, if you, if you're seeing their parents, show it on a, a different patient, how you're taking an x-ray role modeling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a behavior mm -hmm. management mm -hmm. as well. But I'll show you one tip. I always say that to uh, my students, let's say the child has early childhood caries, severe early childhood caries, or trauma, a toddler, three-year-old, okay? And you need to take an x-ray. What do you need? What do you need, Rupert? What <laughs> do you need? Upper standard occlusal. I do love an upper standard occlusal. <laughs> so all you need is an adult size film. Let's say this is a film, okay? Lie the patient, like 45 degree. Say them, this is my camera, and that's, not, that's just going to sit on your nose, and we're going to press the button, beep, and we're going to take your photo and we're going to see it on the computer. Mm -hmm. So if this is the film, just ask the child to bite the film. That's it. Okay, you don't need a film holder. I love an upper sound because so I take them all the time. Yeah, so they don't even need to hold with their finger or thumb. Mm -hmm. So just ask them to bite, that's all. Uh, and Selena is a big fan as well of the uh, of the size zeros and the stickers. Uh, and sometimes the child's un uncooperative will give an empty x-ray with a piece of paper. Oh, she left me in suspense there. She left <laughs> <laughs> with a piece of paper. Yeah, it's definitely sort of just setting it up, isn't it? Um, it's very important, like for the child to see and feel. Like I said, this is like a piece of paper. Have a feel of it. Okay. That's the main thing with tell, show, do. Yes, you're telling them, you're showing them, but they need to feel like how this cotton roll feels mm -hmm. in their hand. How that, that does that micro brush feel? So they, they should be able to touch and feel because they're going to go inside their mouth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, Get Smile is asking, do we have any tips for MIH? We're getting there. Don't worry. Um, and so they're saying, yes, let them take home or things like that. Yeah, absolutely. It's always going through all the different bits and bobs you're going to do. And I remember one of our, our things that in fourth year, I'm pretty sure we had to write down a name that we were going to call every single piece of, of dental equipment and things like that. To... Childrenies. Children. <laughs> Childrenies. Childrenies, yeah. yes. <laughs> so in terms of we sort of stumbled slowly there onto the hall crowns then. So what are your indications you're saying reversible, irreversible, you're doing pull, pull. If, if you look at the textbook, <laughs> yeah, if you look at the textbook information for whole crowns, you need a symptom free tooth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's definitely there should be no pulp involvement. 
um, so like hypoplastic teeth, they're quite good candidates for whole mm -hmm. crowns. But carries teeth, if there is no pulp involvement, uh, you can put whole crowns. The main indication for whole crowns for me is the level of cooperation of the child. So if I'm unable to give local, put the uh, drill and remove the carriers, then the whole crown is an option. Mm -hmm. Okay. But as I said, I, I did whole crowns on reversible pulpitis cases because there was no way in hell I can give local to that child. And I said, I, I always say to the parents, look, there is something else we can try, but if it doesn't work, the two will need to come out. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's give it a go. I'm just trying to buy my time. Okay, mm -hmm. even if I just get a year down the line, it will make my job much easier because uh, in that time, probably the child will trust me and will allow me things to do. Uh, but it, it does work. It's, it's the right, you need to uh, have the right indication. You need to have the x-ray. Um, and then... You... That's the key, isn't it? Need, needing that x-ray. Um, the other thing as well, I think, um, as you say, it's having that compliance. Even if you say it's just buying yourself a little bit of time for it to either exfoliate or... <laughs> one less or one more year's worth of it not moving and losing your space because you know, that's a massive thing um how do you get around saying i'm going to put a big silver tooth in a in a child's like uh, the kids usually love it it's an, it's you know it's iron man's helmet or whatever you know they, they're all over that a special crown a tiara parents not so much like the no. silver the silver tooth no the kids don't have a problem with that it's the parents <laughs> yeah yeah the and I appreciate if someone says to me, I don't want any metal thing looking inside my child's mouth. Fine, it's, it's their choice. But then the option is local anesthesia, drill and mm -hmm. fill. And you need a very good child sitting still on the chair. And if you don't have that, once you explain to the parents actually why you can't do or you need to refer that child and it might take some time to get it done on the sedation, etc., they do accept. Very few parents actually objected so far, and they ask, "Can you not do a white one?" Yes, we I'll do. Pay extra. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, there so are. You're not white... quite doing biomimetic onlays yet, Emacs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. I do my biomimetic dentistry. I do my uh, immediate dentin sealing, resin coating. If when, like I did treat um, last Friday a four-year-old uh, who had an occlusal caries on a lover E, mm -hmm. so he, he was very cooperative. So I was able to give local anesthesia uh, with the wand. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I removed the caries and I did my immediate dental sealing, resin coating, and composite restoration. So do you, you, can do you do follow uh, Dave Husson? Oh yes, yeah. He did a post the other week. It was amazing, like so well done. It was it was awesome. Um, yeah. Probably had biomimetic stuff on on peds. I think he was about four as well. It was awesome. Yeah. Uh, we've had a question about using uh, SDF, and yet yeah, we're getting to that as well. Uh, <laughs> he's just two two steps ahead of us. Um, in terms of as well, your crowning technique. Are you separators? Are you interproximally reducing? What are you what are you doing? I tend to use the orthodontic separators, which is not something very comfortable, actually. But it, the children always amaze me how good they are with that. Um, sometimes you can use IPR strips, especially mm -hmm. if you want to do it at the same appointment. So, yeah, uh, you can use that as well. But you, you need space if you don't have already. And in terms of your question about how to uh, sell the crowns to children, uh, yeah, they're, they're quite good, actually. I'm not being sexist, but usually the boys, like when you say it's superhero tooth, Iron Man tooth, you're going to be really strong with that. And girls like uh, a princess crown. So okay. they love it. They love it. And sometimes they even become upset when they naturally lose that baby <laughs> No, I had I had that the other day of uh, a kid a kid. It's been, it was his only one that he had as well, and all his other teeth were great. But he was so upset that this one had come out. 
Um, I did say maybe the toothbrush pays extra for them. I don't know. Maybe maybe, maybe, maybe less because they didn't look after it. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that, I think, as we were saying there, with either preparation or ortho, but I think that's where it sort of, let's be real, it, it doesn't happen very often, Hall Crown's on on the NHS because if you're saying I've got to put these separators on and then send them away for a couple of days or even for an hour upstairs or if, if you can put a GI in it you're going to do the same thing right it's yeah you're going to get the same that, UGA <laughs> you said it not me uh, <laughs> that, that, that's the issue right I think there's no you look at the studies and the papers and everything there's no there's no doubt that a whole crown for something like that's going to... Uh, it, it works brilliantly. It works brilliantly. And actually, I mean, you, you were trained at King, so, you know, it's, it's not so difficult to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you, you just, you need to be willing to give your time. Yeah. And, and you need a full, you need full set of them as well. So you can try every single one. It's always the last one that you try on as well, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's not actually difficult uh, as long as you... And the practices need to invest in that as well. And there is this idea of they are so expensive. They're not actually. You don't need to buy the whole kit. You can buy individual crowns. Mm -hmm. So like you you sew the kit and then you decide to do a whole crown, lower lefty, just order the sizes you think that is going to fit and fit one and send the others back if you want. Mm -hmm. So it is possible. You just... And if you, by the time you get through like 20 things of uh, Fuji 9 as well, you're not going to be that far, far behind yeah. either. <laughs> no, and there is this concept like, oh, glass cyanide, it releases fluoride. It doesn't release that much fluoride, okay? So, and also it's not good under occlusal load. So if I say to my students, like, you're stuck and you, you only can put GIC, do not just fill the cavity fill the whole tooth like you're doing a crown so provide a good seal at least so yes you can do GIC if you can't do composite or crown but it's not going to last that long Mm -hmm. I found generally as well that composite actually if by the time you've been able to put LA in and I know you've said I actually find LA is the easiest bit of things Easiest bit, particularly with extractions. You know, parents are always worried about the LA, and I'm like, no, nah, easy bit. As soon as they feel it move, that's it, it's game yeah. over. Um, and they hate, hate the slow speed as well. But it's, it's by the really time good. you've been able to do that, and you know, actually a composite is, it's not actually that, I don't think that's the sort of the, the tougher bit. So actually, I think getting, uh, getting them sorted for whole crowns and stuff as well, it's, it's not that bad, really. By the time you've actually done it, you may as well do a composite rather than a GIC. Unless, exactly. unless you're not numbing it up and you're just doing rose head and tit- tickles and then... Yeah. And Ide- then ideally, it. you should do your composite, obviously, under a rubber dam. Mm-hmm. Okay? So that's the ideal environment. But let's admit it, it's not always possible with a young child. So, uh, But you can you still use your cotton rolls, dry tips. You can still provide a dry environment. So... Um, and let's say the, ch- the tooth is going to fall out in a year time, just use bulk fill composite. Mm-hmm. Okay. So in one go, you can use that. Uh, but uh, there is no actually excuse not to treat a child properly. And as I always say, if you think that you won't be able to do a good job, just refer. Yeah. To there you. are plenty of people <laughs> who could do that. And then the, we had had the question earlier on. Emmy saying hello, hello, Emmy. There are no, there are no um, aesthetic awards winning multi implants today, yeah. buddy. Very funny. Um, <laughs> but uh, maybe he wants to venture into some pediatrics. Um, so someone asked about silver day. I mean fluoride. Not anything that I've had any experience with. Um, I know it sort of seems to be the way people are going with. Yeah minimally invasive stuff and things like that. So for people who don't know what it is, can you give us a little intro about that? I'll be honest, I, I've never used it either. But mm. this is something we talk at King's. I think we should, we need to bring it to the department. Mm-hmm. So it's basically an antimicrobial solution. So silver and fluoride it has. So the silver is the antimicrobial p- part and the fluoride is the fluoride that remineralizes the enamel. I think it works brilliantly well with um, early childhood carriers, toddlers, uh, where there's no pulp involvement, 
it's the same indication as well. There shouldn't be any pulp involvement, but there is a caries cavity, but you won't be able to do a filling because the lack of cooperation. Mm -hmm. So you apply that solution and then it's sort of like the rest of the caries over there. Again, you're buying time and in the future, maybe you will be able to restore that tooth properly or it, it, it will help and the tooth is going to fall out naturally. The only downside that I can see, it, it does stain the tooth. So the tooth looks black. So as long as the parent is happy with that and understands the logic behind it, I think it's, it's, it's the way forward. And I know Dr. Raman Bedi uh, has done uh, quite a few webinars. Unfortunately, I missed the practical part of it, but it's, it's very common in America. Mm -hmm. uh, they do a lot of uh, silver diamond fluoride treatments. Um, I think it's quite handy. I, I need to get to do that actually. And so it's, so it's essentially like a fluoride varnish on steroids. Yes. Yeah. Rather, rather than a sort of part of your treatment or your initial, you might as you, you might do it by by yourself some time, some cooperation. Exactly. And then, yeah. But you're not. It's not necessarily something you're doing as a, you know, after caries removal, doing it or anything like no. that. It's more of a yeah. super varnish. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Um, Selena's, Selena's asking you about your, your biomimetic uh, composites. Uh, you know, what do you use for DME? Uh, no, she's saying, um, what composites for the bulk fill for kids and, and what bonding system do you end up using? I tend to use the OptiBond FL. Yeah, and, uh, and Clear Fill Majesty uh, Flowable mm -hmm. as my resin coating on top of that. Um, air abrasion. <laughs> <laughs> um, you get the, the sand, the, sand blaster out with the kids. That's uh, yeah. that's good. Fun. <laughs> yeah, they love it. <laughs> and the the bulk fill wise, uh, what I have is at the moment I have the um, Tetric mm -hmm. bulk fill, so I use that. I use 3M as well. Um, it's quite soft. It's very easy to apply. Once you do your uh, IDS resin coating, you already have a bit of layer anyway. So you don't really need to put too much composite. If it's a very deep cavity, and I'm talking about here about a six, okay? Um, so I don't just bulk fill it, okay? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I try to do it properly. But I'm talking about primary models here, the bulk fill composite. It's a fun decoupling five minutes with time, isn't it? On a, <laughs> Sing lullaby. A five-year-old five under rubber. <laughs> um, get smile is funny. He's asking: Are there any courses you'd recommend for pulpotomy, pulpectomy, and things like that? Cause again, that was something we sort of we cover it. I don't know how. I don't think I've ever gone into into practice then, or I've never deliberately done a, a pulpotomy. <laughs> Uh, I've never gone in with the intention of doing it, but maybe the rose head gets a bit excited by the uh, the yeah. amount of caries and you end up doing one. Um, but Not how, that I how, know how any... often are you doing those? To be fair, since we introduced the whole crowns, mm -hmm. I'm not doing pulpotomy. Yeah. So I haven't done pulpotomy for a very, very long time. And with the biomimetic dentistry, actually, we can get away without exposing the pulp. So you still You're not getting leave... caries detected, I on are you? Yes. Oh, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's about. So unless I know where I am, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I won't be able to treat properly. So I need to see. Yes, I might leave a bit of affected dent in there, but I clear all the margins, EDJ. Yeah, and I'm hoping the pulp will uh, regenerate. So I'm not. Yeah. I'm not exposing the pulp because of the caries detected there. So yeah, and then they're saying, do you run any courses? So I'm feeling with this biometric piece, you need to you need to get on the phone to to Stuart and Fran, and we we've got emulate posterior, emulate anterior's coming. We need to emulate pediatrics. That's I love Stuart. <laughs> That's what we need. We need the emulate pediatrics. Um, I don't run any courses. <laughs> <laughs> You're in demand, Mac. Is go for it. Um, so then we've sort of again we've touched. You're flowing beautifully here. We've touched onto sixes. So, M I H. Yes. Where are you with MIH? Are you doing, are you treating? Are you interceptive extractions? What are your thoughts on it? And where do you draw the line? Uh, 
smaller in size of hypomineralization. Um, so it depends on how severe it is. So if it's a very mild case, that can be monitored in the practice setting. You can do fish sedans, do your prevention regime, of course. The problem is with the uh, moderate to severe cases. Very, very severe cases. If all the four or six is affected, sometimes it's better to get rid of the sixes have a short arch but a healthy arch so you need to know uh, when to refer these patients it's like um, if these sixes are going to come out yes you can do it under local anesthesia or sedation I'm not saying it's not an option but it can be a bit brutal <laughs> for the child so mm -hmm. we tend to do it in the UK uh, we do that under general anesthesia but as I always say to my students we're seeing one concept of pediatric dentistry in this country. In other countries, it's different. For instance, in Turkey, they do everything to save the sixes. If it's re even if it's really broken down, you know what they do? They do root canal treatment and they do CAT CAM restorations on them. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I think the, the case here, because the GA is easy, mm -hmm. the national health system provides that. So that makes things a little bit different. I'm not saying it's, that that is right, that that is wrong, but um, yeah, you can treat the sixes even with root canal treatments and put a decent restoration. But again, if you have the cooperative child, mm. and in I, some cases, if if the sixes are really heavily broken down, you need to think about what's going to happen in ten years' time. If I need to remove those sixes in ten years' time. Th there will be a residual gap, even mm -hmm. you, you, even if you have orthodontic treatment. So sometimes it's best to get rid of these teeth at the right time, so the sevens bodily move into the sixes spaces. So yeah. you need to know when to remove them, uh, and at what time. Obviously, you need to make that referral. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that's that's the thing as well that we were chatting before we came on and. I think when you look at it like that and say this two, uh, these ones have had it, they're going to need a root canal, they're going to need a crown. I think if my 13 year old needed two endos in their sixes and crowns, I'm thinking good endodontist, but average lifespan is, you know, your average lifespan of an endo is 10 years. So yeah. you might have some ortho as well anyway. And then at 22, you're losing two molar teeth and then you need right. some implants. Surely it makes sense if you catch it a little bit earlier. We'll, we'll talk about OPGs and whatever, but yeah. you, know, you catch it that bit earlier, you get the seven almost in the right place and they maybe need a bit of ortho anyway. But I think for me, that just makes so much more sense rather than yeah. having this ticking time bomb that you're going to get blow up when you're at uni or something. Or and it, it just, yeah, it makes a lot more sense that way. So in terms of, you said, assessing it, we're always taught an OPG, what sort of age... What are you looking for? I'll, I'll test you. I'll test you that. <laughs> I should ask you the question. <laughs> yes, you need a, a, an OPG. Uh, and what we're looking at the OPG, obviously, the dental development. So whether we have all the teeth and at what stage the development mm -hmm. of the sevens are. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I'm looking at here, first of all, does this child have a crowding? The ideal conditions for removing the sixes at the right time is all teeth should be present, even eight to eight, to eight on the OPG. Mm -hmm. There shouldn't be any crowding. The child should be in class one occlusion. Okay, so the ideal time for that case, for that scenario is when you see the calcification of the forcatia of the sevens on the OPG. If you remove the sixes at that time, and this is usually around the age nine, mm -hmm. that every child's dental development is different. That's why you need to take a DPT. So when you remove the sixes, when you see that on the x-ray, the sevens just move into that space without any tilting. Okay. But the case is different if you have a child with a class two D1 or class three. That's why you need to liaise with an orthodontist. It's mm -hmm. a multidisciplinary approach it, and also including an oral surgeon as well, if the teeth are going to be removed. So they might say, for instance, class 2D1, let's just take the top ones. Okay, 
but keep the bottom ones no matter at what cost mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so the class three management might be different class one is easy but the others uh you, you need to work multidisciplinary that's when you've got the other bit as well and the, the way you have you get an ortho letter and they ask you to take out some perfectly good fours yes and their upper right six has got a whopping, well, not not, not anymore because it's not allowed, but it's got like a whopping DO amalgam in it or something. Yeah. You're just going, why? Do that. I, I, I always send it back. I say, like, are you sure you want me to remove this? I mean, it's easier for them <laughs> to tidy up, but what's going to happen to that six in 10 years' line? So mm -hmm. maybe it's best to remove that and deal with that space, maybe a bit longer treatment wise, but keep the premolars. So yeah. you, you can always argue with an orthodontist. <laughs> so <laughs> that just peds an author. But on that, on that point, and you said there, you should be, uh, you know, liaise you as a sort of P, as you say, special, special interest, as you say you are. But, you know, as a GDP, who do I refer that to? Do I refer it to an orthodontist first and assume that they'll talk to peds? Do I refer it to pediatrics first? Or Are we talking about or... MIH here? MIH, yeah. Uh, so I would refer to a pediatric dentistry department. Mm -hmm. Okay, so because when, when the child is referred for MIH, they are sent to a joint clinic where yeah. is a, there is a pediatric dentist, orthodontist, and an oral surgeon. But they make team. the decision. Dream team, yes. They make the decision <laughs> amongst themselves, yeah. yeah so that, and, that's, uh, and that hopefully avoids this situation where you think are we looking at it the right way around but i think mih is definitely a tricky one and how much forgetting the sixes for a second affecting the incisors treatment oh, yeah. in terms of their so obviously the incisors you don't get post eruption breakdown but it's it's cosmetic okay. issue and if it's a mild sometimes the child doesn't even realize there is something a white or brown spot there but if it's really like annoying to them, there are things that you can do. Sometimes you need to be a little bit patient uh, because if the two teeth are still erupting, there is no point putting a composite there. They really need to fully erupt. And I actually had a case, it's not an MIH, it's amylogenesis imperfecta. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a bad one. So that's affecting a seven year old. The teeth are not looking This is the one great. you shared the other, the yes. other week. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we, we needed to wait for the teeth to erupt. They weren't my original patients. They came to see me for a second opinion, but the, the original dentist already referred them to Kings. And mm -hmm. the Kings said the same thing. Apparently, they were referred to guys as well. Guys said the same thing. And once the teeth are almost fully through, then I put a bit of composite on them mm -hmm. just to give a bit of confidence. It's not the definitive treatment. And the child will need more de uh, definitive treatment in the future, but um, we can't do whitening, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And in some very mild cases, you can do icon treatment. That works really well, not with the brown stains, but with the white ones. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there are things you can do, but sometimes you just need to take your time. And then we'll come around to the one that we hadn't, I think I've covered everything that people asked. If anyone's got other questions, keep them coming. Shardy's on. Hey, Shardy. Um, and we'll go back to that bit we said about toddlers and trauma, just for the real fun stuff. <laughs> um, so what traumas do we need to worry about and management? And because you've got, as the whole millimeters and percentages and leave it, surgery, what was the Akara? So, trauma. The most likely traumas we're going to get with kids is going to be well, simple like chip. If they're chipping like yep. an upper A, are you worrying about it? Are you doing anything for it? Again, depending on the cooperation of the child. If the child is kicking and shouting, I can't even put the GIC there. Mm -hmm. I can't even see it. So, most of the time, what parents need is reassurance. Okay, so. Um, you need they they will understand because you won't be able to do too much for that child if you can if you can cover with a bit of gic that's perfect but if you can't it's not the end of the world okay um yeah sometimes it can be an intrusion mm -hmm. and you should take an x-ray for that and sometimes it might require a referral 
depending on which way it's buried. Uh, but most of the tr primary trauma cases are concussion, which needs monitoring and, again, reassurance and what might happen in the future. Yeah, so that's the key oh, thing. It's consenting yeah. it, right? It's saying yeah. what, what could happen. And what sort of things do you, uh, Kaizen Densel, always come in saying, Max the best taught me everything I know. So that's either Chris or Val. Um, but, uh, yeah, so what sort of things are you saying, you know, um, what do I normally say? Obviously, tooth darkening, going non-vital, pain and swelling maybe. Um, you then... How much stuff do you throw out about the upper upper right one? And you know, um, is that yeah. going to be dilacerated? Is that is there going to be delayed eruption of the uh, of exfoliation of the A? What kind of what kind of things should we be pointing out? Yeah. So first of all, we shouldn't be scaring too much the parent. However, we also need to give the the possible worst case scenario. So yeah. if that happens, they should not be surprised. Or dentists never warn, warned me about that. So mm -hmm. you need to give the possible complications with the primary tooth, as you said, and also the permanent tooth. Especially if the child had the trauma at a young age, two, three, this is the time when the adult crown is still forming. So, yeah. okay, so you need to give the, uh, the scenario like hypoplastic or hypomineralized enamel, okay? Yeah. Dilaceration. The root may not form at all. Mm -hmm. uh, the worst case scenario, the, the tooth may not come through. It may need to come out. But I'm just talking hypothetically. Okay, we just need to monitor. Hopefully, there won't be anything like that. There's nothing we can do about any of it. We just yeah. need to keep an eye. Exactly. And, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. and what's the... Uh, the like, things to look at in an assessment? It was always things like bleeding at the cervical margin suggests that there's been some form of intrusion or luxation it's, it's subluxation so it's mm -hmm. if you get the bleeding around the margin it's, it's the same as concussion but the definition textbook definition is different get the so, trauma uh, guide out again yes international <laughs> trauma guidelines it's, it's actually quite a handful uh, resource so i think I, everyone should be uh, looking at it as a guidance but um, yeah, when you have a trauma case, obviously, I mean, the textbook, like, are, are you feeling okay? Did you go to the host hospital? Did you see someone else, et cetera, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. So you all, all ask these questions, but have a look at the child. How are they looking? Okay. So if there's like really sw swollen lips, et cetera, probably you may not be able to do too much. So you need to give them some advice. Okay. Just soft diet try to be gentle with cleaning the teeth, etc., cetera, um, and then come back, okay? Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. I can have a look properly. If it's a permanent tooth trauma, it can be a bit different approach because sometimes you need to take an action there and then. Um, but yeah, take your x-ray. Um, there isn't that many cases actually you won't be able to manage. Mm -hmm. But the last thing you want to do and I'm saying to, to everybody here, please don't tell your patients to go to the nearest A&E. <laughs> <laughs> it's because the A&E, there might be some max max trainees over there, but they don't have the equipment. They've got a tongue depressor and some GIC if you're lucky. <laughs> yeah, they don't even have a splint sometimes. So yeah. don't tell them to go to the A&E. If you know that A&E has the equipment, max max department, etc., by all means, but the A&E is not going to do anything. And do you do things like soft tissue x-rays or anything like that if you're thinking? Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? And it, it's very straightforward. How do you do the soft tissue? Just film up on the inside and then... Yeah, and the yeah. x-ray. Yeah, perfect. Um, sort of the pediat the sort of primary trauma, slightly different. In terms of adult trauma, say something like, I'm just going, we're going off piece now, but, you know, um, enamel dentine pulp fracture... In complex a... fracture. Complicated. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, Mally, I hope you're not still here. Um, in a like eight year old, something like that, you know, are you specking? What's the what's the sort of limits of that? I'd, it's something I've never done really. It's like a spec pulpotomy for something like that. Yeah. Um, so let, let's talk about a real life scenario. Okay. So <laughs> an eight year old comes, the pulp is blushing over there, all right? 
yes, the ideal thing would be a strict popotomy. But this child is not letting you do anything, all right? Mm -hmm. You won't be able to give local. What are you going to do? Just clean with a bit of chlorhexidin, mm -hmm. seal it, okay? Put a bit of calcium hydroxide, GIC, and refer this child, or try another time. Mm -hmm. Because you're not going to pin this uh, child down to give local. For Shrek, you're going straight into the pulp. You need to give local, you need to put a clamp, you need to put the rubber down. Yeah. So yeah. In some cases, you can't do that. If you can, yes, you need to do Shrek because that pulp is infected. Even mm -hmm. if it happened, yeah, the textbook says over 24 hours, etc. but it's infected with saliva, everything. I wouldn't take any chance. So if I can, then I would go like two, three millimeters into the pulp, assess the bleeding, if it's favorable, stop and put calcium hydroxide or MTA, if you have it, and restore the tooth. So when you say if it's favorable, are you talking about, you know, achieving hemostasis, color yeah. change of the pulp? Yeah. 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 Sometimes even if you do that, if the pulp is oozing, that means it's going through irreversible changes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in those cases, you can go a little bit deeper and you can do a pulpotomy. Mm -hmm. Not shwek, but pulpotomy, just chop the coronal pulp. And if it's pink, not oozing, and you can stop the bleeding, yeah, calcium hydroxide or MTA and restore the tooth. Because an eight-year-old, the root development is not completed. You want to maintain the vitality so the root can close itself. Sometimes that is not possible. It doesn't close because the tooth becomes non-vital. Then you need to deal with apexification, etc. If you have the skills, do it. But majority of them require hospital referral. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, apexification is MTA plug. Yeah. Far too fiddly. No, I don't like <laughs> it. <laughs> you need some proper serious loops to get that done or a microscope. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think we've covered, we've covered everything, haven't we? Um, I don't know if anyone else has got any other questions. We've had a really, really good... Um, numbers on today which has been awesome um that was killer and do you have any other bits that you want to sort of chuck in any top tips oh, that's the thing i always ask that you know what's the one thing that you want to you would do differently or wish you did earlier biomimetics obviously yes. um <laughs> <laughs> that really really changed my practice actually yeah. so um yeah i would recommend everyone to have a taste of it and you won't be able to get rid of it after that yeah, I, I, yeah, we were, we were chatting and say that. And I want to learn about dentures. Well, if only someone's doing a course on it. <laughs> exactly, um, I'm waiting still. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, we're working on it. Um, but yeah, whilst, whilst I've got everyone here, Biomimetics, go and do Stuart and Franz course. They've got some dates uh, in October. October yeah. um, are you going to do it? Yeah, I, I actually saw it on Instagram. Shall I do it? Shall I do it? Okay. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, that, it's that cliche when you do a course, but you say, oh, it completely changed how I worked on Monday, but it, it genuinely did. And I say, it sounds like they're going to have emulate pediatrics, the third huh? branch of it coming soon, you know, <laughs> Mac, Mac leading the way. Um, I think uh, I think we've stunned everyone into silence and really informative sessions. Thanks so much. So many gems per minute. That's the new rating, gems per minute. That's when you know it's been a good oh. one. Um, but no, I think spot on, Mac. Um, I need to see you soon. We need to have a proper catch yes. up. Yeah, definitely. Um, and we might even need to do a pediatrics part two because it looks like this one's gone down really, really well. <laughs> so uh, uh, Yeah, I really um, enjoyed that. Thanks. Oh, last little question there. What's your view on space maintainers? We didn't, I, I, I wrote that down to ask you that and I didn't say. So space maintainers, you've lost your, your E, which is your one you're worried about. Um, what are you, are you doing space maintainers? Not, I, I did hear a few, mm -hmm. but in Turkey, I, I don't, I can't remember how many I did. It's a very common practice, space maintainers. Mm -hmm. And again, it's here, uh, I think it's down to the, uh, the health system because and three space maintainers <laughs> it's private it's not it's not covered by nhs okay yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. when you tell a parent okay it's going to cost you i don't know i'm just making it up 150 pounds they can have free also on nhs okay <laughs> so and they'll need it when they've lost all their yeah. beans and eats <laughs> i i think it is important the other thing why it's not so popular here 
the concept is, okay, why am I putting space maintainer here? Because this is a high risk child. Because of that, the child lost the tooth. So I'm mm. putting there something plaque retentive. Mm. Yeah, but if the child is brushing well, parents are on board, diet is good, I don't see any harm. Yeah. I think it's, it's very, very uh, a good option, especially when you lost an E. Uh, because the, the sixes are just going to drift. So I don't see that much space issue when I lose a D. Mm -hmm. But the E's create a lot of issue. But again, like when you explain that, okay, the space is going to be closed, etc. Like, can we not have braces after, like in the future? Yes, you can. Yeah, okay, let's do that. Mm. It, it depends how you explain things. But yes, I do space maintainers. I'm actually in favor of them for the right case. And how yeah. is, is it similar sort of hall crowns? You've got various sizes. No. Uh, there are different types of space maintenance. Sometimes you do things like a, a denture. Okay. So, so yeah, like band and loop or removable. That's the yeah. question that's come through the yeah. follow up. <laughs> so there, are, there is a removable one and a fixed one. So the removable one is like a, an orthodontic holy plaque with teeth mm -hmm. on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the, the fixed one. I'm interested now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the, the fixed one is an. Uh, is an orthodontic band, let's say it, okay? Yep. And uh, that sort of has a wire that touches the tooth in front of it, just covering the gap. So you just glue it with a looting GIC cement. Mm -hmm. And there are labs who is doing that. And uh, when I was doing my postgraduate, I used to do it myself, all of these things, space maintainers. So I, I'm a good technician, actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah, like Nimrodental, you just take a scan or impression and they send you the space maintainer and you just need to glue it. And once the premolar shows itself, you just put a bit of drill, flick it off and that's it. Mm -hmm. It's that easy. That easy. Well, there we go. We, we know, all, all need to be doing that as well. Yeah. So if they just put it, put it as a band three. Be, exactly. Be Make everything band three, and the children will be just showing their perform metal crowns, space maintain. <laughs> but how much? How much ortho funding would it save? Maybe it would actually pay in the long term. <laughs> Perfect. I can't believe I forgot that one. I was going to ask that. I remember thinking that when um, when Vic asked about the D's in space, and uh, I'm annoyed with myself. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame. We're, we're not. I mean, we're not teaching our students. We, we're mentioning it but we're not doing it. Mm. But again, as I said, the concept is different. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, there we go. I think we've got it. Thanks again, Mac. That was awesome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And I'll see you soon. Cheers, see guys. Bye-bye.